Guys, it is Sunday, and that means it is time for the Snark Lounge. Hey, guys, how you doing? I'm Jimmy, a.k.a. Snarky Guy, and tonight we're going to be talking about traveling in China. So, got a full, hey, Noel's in the house. There we go. It's time for Snarky. True story. And I notice uh, Ziv is in the house. Is it Ziv or Ziv? I'm probably mispronouncing his name. Probably. So, there we go. So, all right, I want to bring in some guests, and we're going to talk about traveling in China. Uh, first of all, uh, you know him, you love him. It's the man behind the Roho Rope. It's Walk About Roho. Oh, hey. All right. Well, hey, Happy New Year, everybody. You can see here my, my poor New Year's flowers are dying. If you don't know, these are the, the wallet flower, because they look like a Chinese wallet, right? And they say when you have these and you fill them, you know, you put it in your house, 
that you will be filled with money, but my wallet is dying. My wallet flowers are dying. I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Was there actually any no. money in your wallet flower? I uh, no, no, it's empty. You know, I can't I can never keep anything alive, Starkey. Thanks you for inviting me back, man. Uh this is my favorite place to be Sunday nights at 9 p.m. on YouTube. <laughs> there we go. So, and we had another uh, well, so Michael just disappeared. I was about oh, to no. get, welcome Michael into the, in, in, into the fold and he just uh disappeared there. So, I'll text him real quick and uh see internet if he can come back in. In the meantime, hey, we're talking about traveling in China. Uh we also have Kung Fu Adam that may or may not be joining us. Apparently, he had some house guests in his house that didn't want to leave. And so that happens. It's that time of year, man. <laughs> it is that time of year. They kind of yeah. come in sometimes and they just set up shop. And uh, anytime my wife has some family or friends in, they just kind of come in, gather around, and uh, they'll, they'll leave when they want to leave. So, <laughs> yeah. Mikasa, is, is, is Bunny back? Is Bunny back for the new year? Or is she still in Bunny Hong Kong? is back, but not back. Uh, She's in quarantine. Uh, yeah. How, how long? Be... Uh, two or three weeks? Which one is it? Uh, well, both actually. It's mm -hmm. two weeks in the quarantine hotel, no negotiation. Now you have a third week of self monitoring, which used to be in the house, but I guess they're kind of strict on that. So if she comes back home, either I got to stay put. Or I got to go somewhere else for a week. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so, uh, well, you have, she's been away for a while. So I'm assuming you will stay put with her, right? There you go. <laughs> Speaking of bunny, there she is. She was Hi, commenting on flower. Richard Honor being in full flower. There we go. <laughs> That's right. So all of my flowers, well, I bought a ton of flowers. They're all dying. Unfortunately, you know, it's two weeks. I can never keep anything alive. It's a good thing. Skittles. I don't have a Skittles to keep me company in my house. <laughs> Uh, you give him some food and, you know, let him steal some of your food and he's good. Yeah. Hey, he's back. I want to welcome in. He hasn't been on the show for a little bit. It's Michael Borderless Commerce. Hey, man. So, uh, your mic uh, isn't on, uh, buddy. No mic. Oh, right there. How about now? Clear? There we go. He's live. He's yep, alive. I'm alive. <laughs> hey, how you doing, man? Good, man. I just had another baby, so my life's been pretty chaotic Whoa, this past month. Congratulations. Good to give him a round of applause. Good yeah. job. Congratulations nice. to you and your wife, man. That's great news. <laughs> so was it a boy or a girl? I have two girls. Two girls? Yes. Well, I, I, I've also got two girls, and that's uh, definitely fun, man. Awesome. So... All right. Well, guys, I want to be talking about some traveling in China. Uh, first of all, uh, Michael, uh, tell me about your channel for those of you who are not familiar with us. Yeah, for those that haven't seen me in a long time since I haven't been in the Snarky Lounge for a hot minute, uh, I actually do help people with e-commerce, especially like those that want to source from China, maybe want to start like drop shipping their own or their own private brand and they want to sell overseas, especially with like payment processors. I help okay. the, the community do that. So that's kind of like the gist of it there you go now for those who are not familiar uh I i'm only loosely familiar what is drop shipping drop shipping is when you never touch the product so you sell something online and like you use like facebook ads or youtube ads to get get it out to the market and you already have connections with supplier so the supplier directly ships it to the customer and you don't touch it it is frowned upon on amazon so be careful like there's there's ways you need to do, do go about it but that, that's essentially it, where you don't touch the product, you advertise it, and then you sell it to the customer at a higher price point. Well, now that sounds kind of risk-free. Is it actually risk-free? You have to deal with the returns and all that. Like, it's going to be if, – if you have crappy suppliers, you have to deal with that. Okay. I so gotcha. you need to be able to deal with, like, the, the problems that you may encounter. Like, if, if the boat sinks when it's on the way or if it's taking too long and the customer wants a refund, you need to deal with those problems. It's not like Dude. rainbows and unicorns. Do uh, boats sink often? Not often, but it happens. Oh, well, there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. For those of you, uh, now I think most people in the audience are probably familiar with Paul, Walkabout Raho. But man, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel. Oh, that's, uh, uh, first of all, Michael, it's good to see you again, man. It has been a long yeah, time since we chatted. Yeah, definitely. Happy New Year to you too, man. Uh, I am just a, uh, a humble teacher. Uh, here in Zhongshan, China, uh, not far from Michael in Guangzhou. And uh, I 
just point my camera at beautiful things and uh, try to tell nice little stories about hiking. I, I used to be a hotel manager, so I do a lot of hotel reviews, uh, the Chinese car market, and uh, anything and everything that I find interesting, and I hope you all find interesting too. So pretty simple. Well, there you uh, go. Yeah. So have you, have you taken any trips recently? I did, yes. I, I came back from Beijing recently. I, I spent uh, a week in Beijing, and that's why I wanted to be on your show today, because it is the perfect example of what it is like traveling in China there uh, we go. during the pandemic, and there's no stricter city than Beijing to do that in right now. So well, let's see. jump right in. Tell, tell us about oh. this trip to Beijing. All right, well, I'll, I'll go through it real quick. I've, I've vlogged the whole thing. I went up there uh, to do Universal, which was wonderful. Universal Studios in, in Beijing is a brand new one. Fantastic place. Well worth the trip. But then I wanted to do like uh, some of the traditional things like the Great Wall. It's my first time in Beijing. Okay. Uh, everything is super strict regarding COVID uh, testing and everything. And I thought I was completely ready for that. I got up to the Great Wall early in the morning. It's below zero, but I'm ready to go. I'm the only one there. And they turned me away and they said, no, you cannot come on to the mountain because your COVID test had expired. And I was, I think it was at like 58 hours and it needs to be 48 hours. And I didn't know oh, that. Man. Uh, broke my heart. You know, this is something people, you know, want to wait their whole life to go see. So that's two hours out of the city. Now I'm technically outside of Beijing and they won't let me back into the city because I didn't have a updated COVID. So I spent the whole day going police station, police station getting the test, registering the car again, stand, waiting in line to get back into the city. And unfortunately, the same thing happened at the Forbidden City. I went for a walk, a couple of checks, you know, and I had my tests. I was ready to go. But when I got to the ticket counter, they said, sorry, because of COVID, uh, we're only allowing half the people that are normally in. So the tickets were sold out. And so there's a total walkabout fail times two in Beijing. Oh, so that being said, Beijing does... It was my first time there, and I was blown away by the city. It is definitely a city that is very walkable and worth a visit, especially the history. Great nightlife, su supremely um, friendly people. Uh, when you travel in China, you must have all your ducks in a row. Triple check the requirements of everywhere you go. I double checked, and I made the mistake of not triple checking, and those types of things happen. So, yeah, but. As you guys know, when you're a foreigner in another country, you roll with the punches and it's all part of the adventure. So you got to have a good attitude about it. Well, now, I mean, of course, uh, there's a reason why uh, the uh, Beijing is kind of uh, persnickety right now. Mm. So we have uh, some Olympics going on right now. Fine really? Not. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> who would have guessed? It's like, <laughs> who would have known? So. Ziv says Beijing is great, but so cold in January. I think that's but true. That's why I wanted to go because there were less people. And sure enough, like Universal, when you go into Universal Studios, um, you've been to D Disneyland Shanghai, right? Yep. Yeah. So you know how big it is. You know how crowded it can be. Beijing is the same thing. But if you plan it right, you go at the right time, you mm -hmm. can get there. I did the whole park in less than a day. No, no lines, no crowds, nothing. It was cold. It was, it was the middle of the week. It was before the spring festival. So it was the perfect time. And if you hit it right, you can get through it with no crowds. It's there. There you go. That's for, that's for many tourist attractions throughout China. So now, how did you how did you get to Beijing? I flew. I flew from Zhuhai. Okay. And uh, and flying, the experience of flying is getting better in China. You know, I. If I, I prefer to drive, but obviously that's, you know, <laughs> it's a very long drive. <laughs> of course, the, the high speed trains are fantastic as well. But I become more accustomed to flying as the, 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 they're becoming more on time. Flying in China is notoriously delayed because of the, yep. the air, the lanes that the airplanes have to take and everything are kind of restricted. But it is getting much, much better. And every time I go, I have a better, better experience. And I flew into the brand new Beijing uh airport i heard about which, that that's like supposed uh, to be like the biggest one in the world now right that's the biggest terminal in the world i mean it doesn't feel big when you're there because of the way it's laid out but when you look up you're like holy crap this is just giant ceiling it's incredibly there's three starbucks you know <laughs> it, just, it is it is an, it is a remarkably wonderfully convenient on both ends coming in and coming out and uh and it's in the middle of nowhere. It's south of the city in the middle of the plains. And so 
uh, well, it has to be because co- yeah, it, it's it's literally a kilometer from terminal to terminal, and it's like laid out like a snowflake. Yeah, yeah, and, and so, it's along it's along the main central axis of Beijing. If you if you go north, it goes straight into the Forbidden City and straight into all the the other gates and stuff like that. It's it's a it's a remarkably laid out, yeah. and the public transportation is fantastic. I rented a car, but there were trains, there are buses, there. Are de- I mean, it's so easy to get to and from anywhere oh, yeah. in that city. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yep. So, so Michael, what kind of traveling have you done in China recently, my friend? So I did the opposite of what Paul did, and it's uh, I went to the the warm areas in Hainan. Actually, ah. Hainan is actually pretty strict, almost like Beijing, because especially during this season, like everyone's freezing, right? Everyone from the yep. north wants to go to the the tropical beachy place. So we went to Hainan, and I have to give Paul some slack because it's not always so black and white on how you can travel in china especially post-pandemic like yeah that's rules true. change daily they literally change yeah. daily like i've had friends who were traveling from guangzhou to shenzhen vice versa or like to other places and while they were on the plane they found cases in their city that they came from and then when they landed they're like Look, you have two choices go back to where you came from or 14 day quarantine Pick one. <laughs> obviously, yeah. obviously they chose to go back. But uh, for for Hainan, I I did the research. I followed the apps in in Chinese to see what what is needed, and it went pretty smoothly with the forty eight hour COVID test. Which is just personally, I think if you're going to travel anywhere in China, always have a forty eight hour travel test or a COVID test because that will just protect you. Good tip. Yeah. And uh, especially now, it's just so like people are kind of paranoid to travel, especially during Chinese New Year's. Like when everyone's traveling, you never know if you're ever going to have a random case just come up. I mean, we had one in Guangzhou like yesterday uh, happen and you never know when you're going to be changed from low to medium to high risk. Yep. But after we did the 48 hour COVID test, we just took the plane there because it's an island. It's like the southernmost island. Very beautiful place. Yep. Uh, it's actually very similar to Miami, where I'm from. They have like an Atlantis there. I'm not sure if anyone in the audience has been to the Bahamas before, but it's pretty much the same thing as the Atlantis there in Bahamas. And it was a, uh, it was great. And apparently, it's also a tax-free area, so a lot of people go there for shopping, like if they want to buy like a Louis Vuitton bag or like really expensive yep. bags and they don't want to pay the full price, they go over there for the shopping. But it was great. I went with my. It was before my wife gave birth, so we, we went with my my first daughter, and then we just had a great time at the beach. And it was it was I, I would go there uh, again. Now the thing about traveling is that I've traveled in China a lot, but I've obviously haven't left China because it's it's risky. Once you leave China, it's very hard to to come back as a foreigner. Maybe no, no, you guys have had different experience. Tell tell us a little about that. Why is it hard to come back into China as a foreigner? Because right now it it's not so clear on who can come in unless like you have a valid work visa mm-hmm. or a valid business. Like they're checking deep into the business. It's not like you can just open a business and then you can come in. Because I've been following this pretty closely because I want to visit my family eventually in the US. Yeah. But like if you open a business and they're gonna look at your your uh, income statements and all that, and if it's not legit they're going to be like, we're not going to issue you the visa to come here. And tourist visa is a no-go. Like, I, no one I know has come on a tourist visa. The only exceptions are humanitarian where, like, someone is in critical condition. For example, if you have, like, a foreigner and, like, a Chinese spouse, and the Chinese spouse parents are sick in the hospital, and they have, you know, their days are limited, then yeah. they can b- bring the bo- both family members to come here. They still have to quarantine and all that. But that's, like, the the only exception right now they haven't opened to tourists so the people that are coming in now are like diplomats or people that have work visas or legit businesses and it's different for every airport like as as you guys mentioned like the beijing airport has a process the guangzhou airport has a process on how to accept people like sometimes it's three weeks in a government facility and then one week at home or two weeks at the government facility or one week at home and it's not so it's not so black and white. Like it's kind of like a guessing game. You got to roll the punches, as Paul mentioned earlier. So it's 
it's quite a risk if you leave China now to actually come back if you're not Chinese citizen or green card holder. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, Burrex was saying that's why I'm afraid to go home. True yeah. story. Uh, he was saying he was actually just in Hainan or going to Hainan next week. And Burbeck says you need two tests to go there. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I actually had plans to go. Uh, Mona and I were going to go uh, right before the Spring Festival. And when I came back from Beijing, it was such a headache. I, and I was so worn down from the trip that I just canceled the trip. I canceled the trip to Hunan and Zhangjiajie as well. And uh, we just decided to stay home because, as, as Michael said, it's you never know. And sure enough, like a couple days later after I canceled that trip, there was a small little outbreak of one or two cases in each yep. city here in Guangdong. And we all had stars on our travel codes. And so, you know, just to get on the highway, you needed a 24 hour test. So, I mean, and that's just to go from one city across the river to the next city. And then to come back the next day, you need to get another test. And sometimes tests, you don't go into just to go into a clinic and get it. Sometimes especially when these little outbreaks and everyone's moving around, those lines can be hours long. So you, you're pretty much incentivized just to stay home and have a little staycation. And so that's what I've pretty much been doing yep. for the spring festival. JK asks, he says, do you have a star mark from Beijing? No, I didn't. I came back from Beijing um, and the outbreak was maybe, uh, it was more than, it was just, it was like 15 or 16 days after I had returned. So I was past the two week mark, but Zhongshan had one here. So I got one on my, my little COVID thing. Right. So I couldn't leave Zhongshan for about two weeks. Oh, wow. It's all, it's all cleared out now. Speaking of Beijing, bunny mm -hmm. says Rojo is making snarky jealous of the Beijing trip. True story. Are you serious? It says, it says, it says BJ trip. I was, yeah, I did. I, I didn't want to go there. Well, I mean, I, you know, it, it, it's going to go there. It, it always does, but you know, we try to sorry, try to delay that about. as long I'm, as possible. I'm, think, I'm thinking Beijing. I don't know what you guys are talking about. So, um, let's see. We had a couple of comments here. Uh, Wu Chiao is in the house. He says Shins Airport is testing all arrivals for free. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah. In Shanghai, you can get tested pretty much anywhere, and it's it's not much. It's usually like, uh, I want to say like 50 or 60 RMB to get tested, uh -huh. and the results are pretty quick. You can go there any time of the day or night and either print them off the internet or just get a print out at the hospital. So, wow. So how, how long does it take for you to get one? Because it, it, it'll take almost you know 15 to 20 hours to get my results. Uh, generally, it's uh, within 24 hours. So, yeah. so, so you have to plan really, ahead of time. Yeah, you really do. So and like if, you're, we, if you're if you're traveling anywhere beyond 24 hours, you also have to plan to get find a place and, and schedule a test while you're in the place you're going to go at least 24 hours before you have to get on a flight. Yeah, so, because you don't take the chance on that. Yeah, it, it's you. So you, you really have to do your research, if it, especially if it's a city you're not familiar with. Oh, hey, it's a bunny says it's only 40 RMB now. What do you know? I think it's 36 or 35 in my city. So it, hey. it varies. But yeah, yeah, it's not expensive. We uh, bunny and I, we went to pick up her uh, COVID test at the uh, uh, the uh, university hospital here. And there was a French guy. He was supposed to be getting on a plane in two hours and he was going there to get his. And I'm like, man, you're. You're cutting it close. Yeah. <laughs> so, they Bowen do is have... asking uh, uh, if Bunny is in Shanghai quarantine. Yes. Yes, she is in quarantine right now. Unfortunately. Uh, I was going to say, in, like Beijing Airport, I noticed that they do offer expedited test results uh, for mm. an additional fee. I, I don't recall. It was a couple hundred RMB, um, but it's two to three hours results coming back. And that is, that is uh, being offered in more and more places from what I've been told. I haven't personally seen it, but it has in, been reported. In Guangzhou, there's a place that also you can pay like a couple extra hundred RMB and receive it within hours. Oh, nice! Yeah, but that's that's risky. Like, if you're if you're if you're planning to receive it in two hours, that's too much of a risk. Well, there you go. But yeah, uh, that's the one nice thing about traveling in China is you know is if you have that quarantine uh, or excuse me the uh, COVID report, generally travel in China is pretty easy. Mm. Although, then you have to put up with the, the traveling thing. 
you were talking, Rojo was talking about traveling by plane. And uh, in China, there are multiple classes of airplane travel, not just the class, but the airline as well. So, like, uh, what what plane did you take, Rojo, when you went to Beijing? What airline? Um, I I try not to. Uh, the price is varies, you know. But I always try to try the different carriers. When I went to Beijing, I did China Southern. Um, okay. It yeah, and I, I actually like China Southern a lot. Um, I've done Shenzhen Air, done Xiamen Air, done you know all these all, a lot of different uh, carriers, but. Uh, China Southern, I think it's based here in in Guangzhou, and I yeah, just, uh, it is. It is a little bit more expensive, but uh, you know, I, I find them to be very, very good. I've I've used them internationally as well, so that's that's the one I prefer to use. But I try not to use the same. I try to different ones depending on timing and when the flight how, is timed. How about you, Michael? What did you to fly when you went down to Hainan? I'm a little biased, but I also use China Southern mainly because、mm. we have a membership there.、Mm -hmm. So it's just you know adding the points so that you can get. Actually, that brings me to another point. So when when COVID like first started to be under control in China, there were tons of offer offers from airlines to be like, hey, if you buy this ten thousand dollar or ten thousand RMB package, you can travel for free. Within like the next six months to anywhere that our airlines、uh, offers, I know some of my friends did that. Yeah,、um, I'm not sure if they're offering that now, but I know like、uh, when every everything was recovering, they were definitely offering those packages. And China Southern was one of them.、Uh, wow. Now it's it's kind of funny.、Uh, Caliber Wings was mentioning uh, uh, airlines, and he mentioned、uh, anything but Spring Airlines, and that's what I took last time I flew was Spring us, Airlines.、Man. Yeah, I saw that. Tell us about that. Is it not bad? <laughs> so, as you know, we got you know a lot of them. You know, you can take like when we fly down to Hong Kong. Of course, I can take Cathay Pacific, which is pretty nice, regardless of what class you travel by. You got your China, your Southern China, your Eastern China, which are generally mid range. Or you know, it's not luxury, but it's not bad. And of course, most of them give you、uh, you know a meal service and drink service, and then there's Spring Air, which is basically the city bus. Of the air, literally, they have these one-piece、uh, plastic seats that don't recline. They don't move at all. They don't even have a cushion. It's a little like a bus bench.、Oh. There's no meal or drink service, and to make matters worse. Thirty minutes before you land, an announcer will come on trying to sell you something. So for like thirty、oh. minutes, you listen to this long-winded diatribe in Chinese where they try to sell you, you know, like. <laughs> Makeup or luggage or I don't know maybe makeup for your luggage or something who knows, <laughs> but、um, thankfully there is still a bathroom, a bathroom, <laughs> one <laughs> on this whole airplane, and so you know you know you you can just sit there listen to music what else and I decide you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna go there you know I gotta go gotta go you know and why not and of course there's a line. That's right, thirty thousand feet up, and apparently everyone else has the same idea. Of course, it gets worse because as you're boarding for the plane, there's always going to be that one guy that runs right through the airport and straight in to leave a hot, steamy one in the toilet right before you take off. The toilet's more comfortable than the seats. <laughs> apparently, yes. And I'm like, I mean, it makes sense. Why would you use a frequently more clean and much larger, more convenient toilet in the airport when you can just as easily jump into the small, cramped, and confined airplane toilet? That makes perfect sense. <laughs> so I finally get my turn, and wouldn't you know it, the airplane air、uh, lavatory smells like ass. I mean, more more probably like hot pot and shaved durian, you know, <laughs> ass. It's just it's just bad. So I get inside this toilet, and you kind of, you know, I'm, I'm a kind of a bigger guy, you know. I kind of get in there, I kind of turn around and make sounds that everyone thinks I'm, you know, having the the Mile High Club by myself in there. And of course, there's a huge mess in the toilet. I try to flush it. Nope, it's 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 basically there until we land. <clears throat> and so, what do you do? So I I hit the little, you know,、uh, you know, call flight attendant button. In my best Chinese, I tried to explain the problem, which doesn't take much because, of course, there's a blue-filled toilet, and you know you just gotta make a little meme face and point at it, and and <laughs> oops, and, and 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 she disappears. And I'm thinking, you know, she's gonna go get the air plunger. I assume that's a thing, 
air plunger. <laughs> I assume. I don't know. Anyway, she comes back a few minutes later with a perfume bottle. <laughs> <laughs> like from her really, own purse, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably she's really spritzing the area, and I'm like, what the shiz? <laughs> I mean, I can only matter later how this story is retold. So this chubby foreigner had to use a toilet and it smelled, and so I sprayed it. What's his problem? <laughs> Thankfully, I just had to pee. But uh yeah, so gotta love it. That's so, spring air spring airlines, is that right? Yes. So the maker of the plane with a <laughs> the make has the plastic seats is Airbus. Okay, well there you go. So, hey Jamaica Funk's in the house. He says it is a bus with wings. That's true. Hmm. So, true story. Spring is the Spirit Airlines. Of, I've never flown Spirit before, but I assume no, that's it, it sucks. <laughs> it's uh, well there you there, there 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 you go. So, did the perfume work? So Bunny says, let me, oh, let me know the brand. But I don't know. I don't know what the brand was. And here's the thing. Even if I knew what the brand was, I don't think I would recommend it because I'd still have that mental connection to, you know, it's covered stinky in poo. Smell of- <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. So yeah, at least at least they don't force you to eat spicy chili curry. That's true. So... Yes, uh, flying in China is always kind of a fun thing, but generally the, the process is pretty smooth as far as flying. I gotta say, yeah. So, but uh, has anybody ever taken a trip uh, by car? I know uh, Rojo probably has around China uh, many times. And Michael, yeah. I know you've done a few road trips as of well. Of course, right? we both have yeah. licenses, man. <laughs> yeah. ah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think I think you got a slightly nicer car than I do, man. So. Um... <laughs> I've I've done Dude. I've done I've been from one end of Guangdong to the other. I've I've visited every city in this province and uh, drove in, into Yangshuo and Guilin, and up into Hunan and Jiangsu, or not Jiangsu. I'm sorry, Jiangxi. And uh, uh, that it's basically within the southern parts of China. But when I travel to other cities, I often will rent a car. And renting a car in China is much different than it is in the West, where it's pretty straightforward. You pick your car and you go. It's much cheaper to rent a car in China, but uh, the apps are a little difficult to navigate, and the cars are not the greatest uh, condition. Even if they're brand new, they you know they're they're fresh. They got like a hundred kilometers on it, and they still smell like cigarettes. Yeah, of yeah, course, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, gotta love but those. Tra- traveling by car in China is a wonderful experience. The toll roads are great. They're they're very convenient. They they're very fast. There's rest stops everywhere. Uh, but I actually like the little country roads a little bit off the beaten path that go through some of the villages and kind of see the off the beaten path a little bit. It takes longer, but I mean that's why you do a road trip is to explore. And there you go. Some, some of the best discoveries I've ever had and best experience I've ever had were been unplanned events along those roads even when it's getting stuck in the mud or you know flat tires or you know being invited for tea in some random village in the middle of the mountains highly now for those of us who, <laughs> yeah. for those of us who do not have a license my wife was just asking help snarky get the chinese i don't have my driver's license in china <laughs> so how does one get a driver's license in china michael uh, I mean, there's it's actually improved greatly for foreigners, in, in my opinion, for, for like the big cities. There's two types of licenses. They're both really easy to get. Uh, okay. One is, uh, it's like a, I guess you can call it a permit or like a temporary license. And these can go up to like a year long where you don't even need to take a test. Like if you have a license from your home country, you don't need to take a test. You can just show like your, your home country with like your passport and your translation and they will issue you a temporary license as long as you're in China legally, at least okay. in Guangzhou. Then the the five year license, which is probably what Paul has, what I'm assuming, is you mm. have to take like a hundred question test, which depending on your city, they could offer it in English. So luckily, I live in Guangzhou, so they do offer it in English. But mm. if you're in a like a tier three or tier four city, you might need to practice some Chinese to take I think the I'll test. Be okay in Shanghai. Yeah. yeah, you'll be you'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah. And as long as you score over 90 out of 100, there's 100 questions. If you score over 90, you'll get your license the same day. So, I'm now, gonna here, you. I'm going to interrupt ahead. you real quick. Heinlich, thank you so much, sir. I appreciate that. So, 
So I gave uh, 10 euros and said some support for your next flight. I appreciate that, my friend. So sorry to interrupt you. Uh, Michael, continue, no, that's please. That's cool. That's cool. Um, so if you don't have a license in your home country, because I love driving. I'm, I'm American. Like, we love to drive. Of course. Uh, if you don't have a license from your home country, good luck is what I can yeah. say. But if yeah. you want to know how to get it that way, you need to take the Chinese course. And it's only in Chinese. Some people let you bring a translator, but then you have to be like mm, very sketchy about it. And you need to take four tests, two driving tests and two written tests, all in Chinese, just like a oh, regular wow. Chinese person. And this process takes about three months. It could be between three to 6,000 RMB yeah. for the whole thing. And you're not guaranteed the pass. So if I were a foreigner coming to China the first time, I would definitely get a license in my home country first. So, so you can be able to drive in China. Otherwise, it's going to be a big pain to get it from scratch. Mm. Okay. And and getting it getting it translated, by the way, you have to register a Chinese name with the government, and that that's part of the process when you tra when you get um, a Chinese license. And that was actually the hardest part of the process, is uh, knowing which government office to get that done. It's doable. If you don't know, just ask. Someone will point you in the right direction. And he's right. The, the the Chinese test is available in English. It's not the greatest translation. I mean, it, as far as intuitive answers, some of the answers you know could be A, could be B. But there's plenty of resources online. There's practice tests online to to help you through that test. And uh, it was remarkably simple. You know, the 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 computer online test in English. And he's right. It, it it's the best way to do it. So how much does that cost if you do it that way? Very little. I yeah. I don't recall. It was a couple of years ago, but um, the most oh, expensive no, well, part of it up. was the. He said it was ten RMB. What? Well, um, the, I, this, I don't think yeah. that the whole cost <laughs> include the translation yeah. and the paperwork you need to get. It's probably going to be close to three hundred to six hundred RMB. In, in yeah, I, I would go with that. Yeah, but it's still pretty affordable, yeah. and that is the whole affordable. process. The whole process, if you don't have a registered Chinese name with the government that's, you know, that's notarized and everything by the government, it, it took me about six to seven weeks uh, to go through that process and get it here in Zhongshan. It, it depends on what city. If you're in a larger city, it's probably a little easier. Yeah. There you go. So Noel says that he uh, failed and had not passed any of the mock test. He says you need a 90 to pass. That's right. Yeah. So now I do know, and I do have a, there's a little mini app in a WeChat on my, uh, on my phone that yep. uh, lets you practice that. And it's, most of them are fairly straightforward. Although like uh, Noel says, there are a few tricky questions that you can stumble on. But uh, when you, when you take those practice tests, it's, it, they're not a lot of questions. There's a hundred questions, but there's not like a, a 100 out of a thousand possible. So when you're taking these practice tests, the same one comes up over and over again. If it's a yeah. sticky question, you start to remember which, oh, that's the answer for that one. Um, and that's how I did. I just kept on taking the practice tests. So I started consistently scoring over 90. I'm like, okay, I'm ready for the test. Yep. Would you ask, it's easy to pass the test if you practice. Yeah. Uh, JK, JK, JK wants to know if you need any health check to get the license. Yes. Yeah, but it's like, a, it's a check the block. Like, at least in yeah. Guangzhou, you go to the DMV there the department mm -hmm. of motor vehicles and you can go upstairs to get the test and they just check your oh. eyesight i don't oh, know how nice. they do it in Zhongshan, but in guangzhou they just check your eyesight to make sure you can see and then they're like okay you pass yeah they, 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 there's there's a host there's a hospital the public hospital and there's like a separate area just for this and they go to the doctor the you know it's like a 90 year old woman she looks at you and says okay you got a healthy body here's your <laughs> eye here's your eye check you know, and there is a colorblind test. You got to do that as well. Yep. And um, but uh, it's not a difficult uh, process. I was in and out in ten minutes. Yep. Well, there you go. That sounds pretty straightforward. So, unlike uh, you know some other countries, which make you take you know uh, you know the, the the test and then the practical test, and of course, then they want you know uh, two forms of identification, a letter from your third grade teacher, and two vital organs, their choice. <laughs> so. Yeah. True yeah. story, but now, uh, I, I do want to add something about driving in China. So, uh, it's definitely there's pros and cons. You need to get used to. There's no right of way in China. Like just being flat out, there's just no such thing as right of way in the test. There's such thing, but in reality, 
There's no such thing. So you just got to be able to go with the flow. Yeah. And if you're traveling long distance, like I've traveled six, eight hours driving with my family to like Chaoshang or to Shangwei, which are, you know, not, not a tier one or tier two cities. And I'm actually really surprised about the, the quality of the roads and uh, as Paul mentioned, there's a lot of rest stops. Like you're not gonna ever run out of gas or food on the way, as long as you go like through the main routes. As if you go to like the battered routes, I'm not so familiar with those. But yeah. if you go to like the main routes, it's it's very smooth ride, and it's I felt like it was very good quality ride. Whereas I've been to places specifically in South America where I felt mm-hmm. like I was gonna die driving because I was. Yeah skirting like cliffs and mountains and they didn't have rails and i'm like whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. um so i didn't get that sense as long as in the guangdong province it may be a little bit different in the north of china when you go to like the mountainous areas but at least in the guangdong yeah. province it, it was a, it was a good experience i didn't mind it now one morning if you're driving in china just don't do it during the holidays just don't do it because right. you're going you to just don't travel crazy traffic. Holidays being avoided. <laughs> yeah, like you're going to run into so much traffic. The only good thing about traveling during the holidays is that you don't have to pay any toll roads. Tolls yeah. are free. Hey, but it's just not mm. worth it if you're traveling like the last day of Chinese New Year's coming back to the. Oh, you're going to expect like four times the amount of travel time just because yeah. of the traffic. Um. I love this comment by Jamaica Funk. He says the quality of the roads in China is the problem. It's the quality of the drivers. It's getting better. I mean, just in the last five years, it's gotten so much better. And the the you know he's right about there being no laws, uh, you know, like rules of the road. But there are cameras everywhere, and you have to fear the cameras. The cameras will get you. I've gotten caught twice, <laughs> and yep. uh, for the same thing, I crossed a, a solid white line. Uh, you know, you're at a red light and the person in front of you doesn't want to go. So you have to like go around them. You have to cross them. The camera got me. And the process of points and getting that cleared off your record. Michael, we talked about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's not fun. It's not fun. So you drive the speed limit. You follow the rules and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Let other people go crazy and break the law and stuff. Although cameras in China are amazing. I actually, speaking of traveling, I'm sure you guys have taken the uh, the shared bikes before. Everyone ever taken those before? And I so, have not. I have never done it. Oh, what? my goodness. Yeah. So Really? The, uh, the, I'm never sure you know worked the, for, I, the app has never worked for me, man. I've never been able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's why I want. It, it, it's fine. So... The, for those of you who don't know, in China, they have shared bikes literally everywhere, you know, and you just, you know, you pull out your phone, you scan a little QR code, and it's about 50 uh, Chinese cents per hour to ride, or you can get a monthly plan for like 16 bucks a month. That's about two and a half bucks US uh, if you want to take that. And it's just absolutely wonderful. Uh, normally in the mornings, I will take... Uh, you know, the shared bike, you know, from my house to the Metro, then I'll take the Metro, then I'll take another shared bike. And it's, it's, it's pretty great. As a matter of fact, uh, Burbex actually just did a video talking about the literal mountains of shared bikes that are piling up around China now, because a lot of the companies are going out of business. I digress. So I find a bike the other morning outside the Metro to go to work. I scan it. And just some scanning, I noticed there's a bag in the little basket up front, someone else's bag. I look around and there, there's, there's no one. So I look in the bag and it's, there's a hard drive in there and someone's personal effects. And I'm like, okay, obviously somebody's. So I don't have the time to sit around. I'm thinking, well, I don't want to just leave this. So, you know, I'm like, no problem. I'm just going to, you know, uh, ride to school and let my director take care of it. No problem. He'll call the police. So I ride to school. I get there and the director is literally at the door waiting for me. He tells me the owner realized his bag's missing, couldn't find it. So he called the police. The police immediately checked the CCTV, found me, identified me, know where I work. And then they tracked me all the way there using the CCTV cameras and the police are on the way to get the bag. And I'm like, <laughs> wow. The SWAT is coming amazing. to get you. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the cameras everywhere, which a lot of people say that's bad, but I'm like, Okay, you know what? 
you know, what, what are they going to, you know, identify, you know, when I go poo? Okay. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. The there. thing with the cameras, uh, Westerners, we, they're, everyone's scared of the cameras, but there's not somebody like sitting at a computer watching the Laowai go all throughout the city. I mean, that's not what they're used there for. It, exactly. It, it, <laughs> they're used in the exact same way that you just described. And it's not just for surveillance. It's for solving problems, whether it would be a simple problem like that or a major problem. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's good because, I mean, you know, I mean, this is in Shanghai, for example, if my wife wants to go down at three in the morning and buy a Baozi, I feel safe with her going, you know, because mm. it's it's just fine. I mean, mm -hmm. like you're saying, a lot of people will be you know, kind of upset about this. Um, two years ago, I was uh, taking my bike uh, across the river here in Shanghai and I take a ferry. And so I, you know, get on the ferry, go up the top and there's a policeman up there. He's actually a SWAT team policeman. You know, big SWAT label on the back. And he's up at the top just, you know, taking photos with his phone. And I say, hi, you know, I'm, you know, and he turns around. English is probably better than mine. He's like, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, I'm doing pretty good. And, you know, and he's like, so it's a nice day to take photos. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And it's like a five minute ferry ride. So, you know, you do kind of you do the five minute, you know, Insta friend, you know, and off the ferry. And, and so he's like, so he's like, you must be Jimmy. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know, yeah, how do you know? And he's, he's like, he's like, oh, we knew everything in China. And he kind of paused and he's like, nah, he's like, you're the only foreigner on, on the ferry and you paid with your Alipay. So it's cool. And oh, I'm wow. like, oh, geez. Yeah. I'm like, you know, you know, they're, they're, they're on their game, man. Yeah. They're on their game. Yeah. So I, I, want, I want to share something about the, the cameras, especially when, when yes. Paul brought up about the the cameras for for the driving oh i actually work in the in the, in the tech industry uh, as my primary job and one of the products that we sell are those cameras and those cameras algorithms are amazing not only can they see everything clearly in 4k but it's to the point where depending on where it's located they can scan your face and see if your face matches the registration on the license plate. So each license plate has the person's name, registration, all that, and they can match it. So if there's like a stolen car, then they can figure it out. And to add to the points that Paul was mentioning, so if you screw something up and they catch you on camera and they give you the points, it, they are leveling up the technology where if you honk where you're not supposed to honk, like there's the, the no honking yeah. zones, the <laughs> algorithms can tell which car honked and they can give you more points for that. What? So it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Yep, yep. Those algorithms wow. are, are going to work to catch those people. Wow. Mm. <laughs> That's nuts, man. Yeah. I, I kind of wel I, I welcome that in a man as, a, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I've heard they don't even have to identify your face. They can identify you at a distance based on how you walk, your individual yeah. gates. Yep. So... That's, I just that's... wish the the honking they can do for the electric bikes. I don't like. I know the cars have the the honking, but the electric bike honking is just oh ridiculous in Guangzhou. I'm not sure how it is in, in your. Oh no! Bike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad in Shanghai as far as the electric bikes. I mean, it's except for the Why My delivery drivers. Those guys are beeping and will take every shortcut and you know try to game the system and save themselves a cool 17 seconds. So, yeah, they're pretty uh, you know hardcore. Those guys. But uh, so speaking of traveling, is anybody taking the high speed train in China? Come on, man. I think, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think <laughs> it's like the first thing you do when you're here, right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Knock that off my bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> so I love, I love, I, I, I will sooner take, if I have the time, I will sooner take a high speed train over the uh, plane any day of the week. Yeah. The high speed trains are wonderful. Uh, <laughs> for example, in uh, you, we get them on in, in, in Hong Kong to Shanghai. It'll take you a you know, it'll take you a hot minute to get where you're going. But what I love is they've got a QR code on the seat, so you can order your uh, delivery or why am I? And somehow I don't know how they do this. They've got this black magic that coordinates where the train is with the why am I? So like for example. Uh, you know, I wanted to order me some Burger King. Yeah, no problem. The what? average. You... Wow. Okay. <laughs> I I wanted some Burger King. Why not? You know, I mean, who who does like a good Whopper, right? 
So the average delivery time is set to 45 minutes, which is about average for, you know, uh, uh, Meituan or Erlama, um, which is the apps for people who don't know for uh, ordering food in China. There's others, of course. Um, and about after 30 minutes, I'm on the train. I get a text and says they're running behind. They can't make the delivery time. Now, at this point, you know, you normally just wait longer, but I'm on a train that's only going to be stopping, for example, in Changsha for four minutes. So obviously I can't wait for it. But now the amazing thing is somehow they have the technology to match the delivery with train and your order. And they reroute the order to the next city I will be stopping in. That's that's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so not only did they successfully get my order, but you know they anticipated my stop to that narrow little window, and the guy's waiting there. And eleven minutes after my delivery time, I'm chowing down on a Whopper and fries. That's incredible. I just imagine the poor delivery guy waiting on the <laughs> with a Burger King. Get in four minutes. I got I got four customers. You, this is yours. You 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 got the Big Mac. Okay. You, are you? It's just... <laughs> So, oh my God, Bowen's like, now you're speaking my language, Burger King. Yeah. <laughs> Sam's yeah. like, holy shiz. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you can get the Y. Dude, you can get everything, anything you can order. I, I have literally seen people order just like mugs and glasses and hats and everything else you can order delivery <laughs> on the train. Your Taobao Kui D is coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the best part about the trains is, of course, they had that scheduled, like in Changsha, for example, I'm using that. They have a five-minute window, right? Or uh, four or five-minute window. And so everyone will run off their, you know, their chain smoke yep. and, you know. And there's always this one guy who doesn't anticipate the doors. The doors close and he's like, turn around, ah! And he's like <laughs> banging on the window, you know. That train's going, like, <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, I mean, you can get another train, but his bag is on that train already. And they're not stopping. <laughs> so, got to love it. Speaking of got to love it, he's late, but better late than never. It's Kung Fu Adam. What's up, everybody? Hey, hey. hey. Welcome Sorry for party, being late. Sorry hey. for being late. Better late than not at all. There we go. Yeah. I, had, so, uh, I had a studio set up and everything, but... Uh, I was told that, uh, that at some point today that I was going to have to hang with uh, some friends of the family. So it happens, dude. It's, it's it's time of year. Yeah, that's what you do. <laughs> so, so tell us about travel. What kind of traveling you've done in China, my friend? Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, as a photographer, I traveled uh, over uh, quite a bit of China, but it's all basically uh, you know travel and tourism type photography. Um, I've been to some places that uh, other people aren't allowed to be um, for photography specifically, um, but other places just where people just don't normally go um, when they when they look for um, traveling in China. I tend to go to small villages or like um, older towns, that sort of thing. So, so what so what do you do from from a lot of these uh, travels? I mean, just for photography for your own purpose, or what do you no. do? Um, so, so when I first came to China and was, was, you know, doing photography in these little areas, I was kind of just doing it myself. You know, I was just, you know, I, I would go and I would find a really cool place somewhere that I thought was historic and, you know, that had some interesting people, some interesting culture, somewhere I can learn from the people. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I would go to somewhere like Lanjo or somewhere that, you know, a lot of people maybe don't go. And that, but I would find little places there that are just really cool. Um, and so over time, people, I, I met a lot of people while traveling uh, and, and some photographers that kind of learned about who I was. And I was invited by government agencies to uh, and tourism boards to take photos of their locations and to join in like photo exhibitions and stuff from, uh, you know, the, the photos, different photo societies in China um, and actually from uh, from the Beijing propaganda uh, for themselves, I, I assisted them on on a couple. Uh, again, when I do this, this is just like um, these are just photos. They're not uh, you know any political thing or anything like that. But it's it's photography of places, um, just showcasing the best of the places without being fake. Like one thing that I'm known for is my photography is is real. It, it, it's not uh, heavily photoshopped or modified, any of that kind of stuff. So 
Um, okay. That sort of thing. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. hey, Stephen, welcome to the show, my friend. Good to see you. So, um, oh, someone was asking, he says, I can't order YMI for my 12306 app. How do you get it for foreigners? Anybody know? Say that I again. Know that app. What is that app? I have no idea. That's why I was I I to throw that out there. Normally, uh, for ordering uh, YMI, I would use Meituan or Erlama, which mm. curiously enough means, are you hungry in Chinese? Uh, those are the two big ones. Um, so I don't know about those other apps. There's, there's I, I just use WeChat, like Meituan and WeChat, right? That's Yeah. 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 You can use that. There's others, like there's Sherpas, which is mainly uh, geared towards foreigners, but it, all the prices are a little higher. So, you know, forget that stuff. But uh, I, do, I have a question for, for Adam. He said he's been to places like I've, I've usually been to the mainstream places, you know, that are easy to access. But have you been to places where you needed to go to like a special application process to enter? If you have, Definitely. would you mind sharing that with us? Well, I mean, I've been to a couple of places where. Uh, you're not normally allowed to go, but the government invited me, so they brought me to different places. So um, places that there's uh, some Xinjiang locations. Um, there's a, there's I don't know if you guys are aware of a, a place called Dunhuang. Do you know Dunhuang in Gansu? Have you heard of that? I know. So Dunhuang um, has a lot of really old cultural relics. Uh, it was on the the um, the Silk Road, right? And uh, it, it's, uh, it's one of the main towns along like crossroads there in China. And uh, it has the largest cache of Buddhist art in the, in, in the world there. It's like 1,400 years old. People are not allowed to go in and take photos. Like if, if you're like they have a, they, there's like 800 caves. It's amazing. Like the, the, the art and the history is just ridiculously cool. But, you know, you have to get a tour to go in. Only a certain amount of people can go in every day. Um, like the Getty Institute helps work on the, the preservation of it because it's all it's so old. It's like falling apart. So like they really care about light and, and all these different things. So what's um, that place called again? It's well, it, Dunhuang is the city, but it's called Mogao, Mogao Ku, the Mogao Grottoes. M-O-G-A-O. And, yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, uh, basically since 1966, nobody was allowed to go in and take photos at mm -hmm. all. Um, and very few people are allowed to go in on a given day for tourism purposes, that sort of thing. Um, and, and when you go into these caves, you're only allowed to go into like between five and 10 caves on, on a, on a, on a trip. Right. Um, and you're only in these caves for like a minute or two, like you're in there really quick, just in and out. So no, um, like even with your phone, no, no photos, no, no, video with the no. Phone. If, if you wow. pull out your phone to try to take photos, they will have guards that will literally just get you out of there. Immediately. <laughs> like they're really, wow. you, you can search on the internet, search for photos of, of Mogao grottos and you'll see some from the Getty Institute and you'll see very few high quality images from there. Hmm. Um, Why don't you just put, put the Chinese up there for anyone who wants to oh, search yeah, it? Perfect. But um, but I was allowed to go into the grottos and take like full on professional photos and video um, for a couple of days. It was it was incredible, like one of the coolest experiences I've had um, wow. in China in terms of like this is a place where nobody else like I'm the first American ever allowed to take photos in there for my own purposes. So like it's it's pretty cool that what I was able to, to do at that time. And I mean, like like. I have full, you know, authorization to do whatever I want with those photos, that sort of thing. Um, but some of the photos I gave to them and they're going to use for like marketing and that sort of thing. Hmm. But, yeah. So that, that's just one of the examples. Like again, the Xinjiang ones, uh, uh, there was some difficulty. I had, uh, I had an Inspire 2 drone, so the really big um, um, DJI drone. And uh, it was stuck in the, uh, the, ho uh, the, the airport. <laughs> in um in um Urubchi. uh it wouldn't go to my final destination which was in ev which is like the northwestern edge of uh xinjiang um but uh again because i was invited from the government um they had somebody actually just go pick up my drone from the airport and drive it the whole way so i had oh, wow. a couple of days yeah it's pretty funny but but where we went it, like it's 
an amazing city called um, 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 Tekesi, T-E-K-E-S-I, and, uh, or, and, and T-S-E, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> but um, it, it's, it's a city that is formed in the shape of a bagua, you know, the eight-sided uh, symbol. So it, it's just an amazing city. But foreigners um, have to get through a lot of check-throughs to get there. And right now, it's really difficult to go there. So if Beautiful someone wanted place, to see I your photos, it. are your photos online, Adam? Um, the best place to look at my photos right now, because my website, I'm redoing it. Um, the best place to look at my photos are on Instagram right now. So, Okay. I, some of the places, I, like I, I've done some videos um, and posted them on my YouTube channel, but really Instagram is the best place. So just look for Kung Fu Imaging. Uh, there you go. Instagram. Okay. Kung Fu Imaging. Yeah. If you uh, do have a, just search for that on Instagram, you can find his photos. So... Nice. So I like this. Ba Bowen says, how many times a week do you order why am I? So, uh, <laughs> Don't answer I that. Bun Bunny's <laughs> online. Don't answer it. <laughs> many. Uh, <laughs> more than once. Actually, the truth be told, I've been trying to order a lot less. Uh, I've been doing a lot of cooking. Yesterday, true story, not making this up. Yesterday, I went out and I walked. 10 kilometers all right man proud so, of you brother yeah and, and i know that because he was telling he was talking to me and i could hear him. he's out of breath he's like dude i can't yeah. do this i'm on my way back now <laughs> so i walked all the way down to the shanghai uh, train station and got there and then i took a bus back <laughs> oh, that's funny. it was cold it's good. Good job, brother. Do it again. Do it tomorrow. 10, 10 K in the city is no joke, man. I mean, it, it it's, it's hard on your ankles. It's hard on your feet. The, you know, the sidewalks aren't always, it's not a perfect running track that you're hiking through the city on. There's, there's a lot of obstacles. There's a lot of stops and goes. There's a lot of ups and downs. 10 Ks through a city is not an easy track. So, yeah. And this is why I don't order more and more. Why am I? It's like, I will check the bank transactions to know it. <laughs> Bunny, come the, the, on. The, does your wife have it so that she gets text notifications every time there's a oh transaction? Oh, God, really? <laughs> Breaking up. <laughs> this, this is why I'm a single man. <laughs> no, well, true. I, I just, I have, my, my, my stuff is, all, is, is in my own name, so it's okay. There's there you go. Hey, you know what? My wife is wonderful. So mm -hmm. she, she uh, everything everything I do is just a little better with her. Everything. So I'm really looking forward to her getting out of quarantine. We so, love Bunny. We love Bunny. We miss her. We want to see her back on the snark. Yes, yeah, so I want to see her back too, definitely. So, well, I hate to do it since Adam just joined us, but we're just about out of time. Mm -hmm. So, there you go. She's <laughs> like, the, the home money bank is under my name. <laughs> you probably get a Smart text message from my Smart girl. You're going to get the idea of a text message from me. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So, well, hey, I want to give everyone a couple minutes uh, just at uh, final thoughts. And, of course, uh, what videos you have coming out in the near future. Uh, uh, let's just go right to Adam. Adam, uh, any final thoughts on traveling in China and any <laughs> videos you have coming out in the near future? So, uh, first off, I want to apologize for being late. Um, I, I know this is a really fun conversation, a lot of cool stuff. Uh, traveling in China is, is, is an amazing experience, and I hope more people can get out and do it. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll, 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 I'll have some information in the future about, uh, a photo tourism company that, that we've been working on. Um, also, um, uh, to be honest, um, I'm finishing up some of the videos that Snarky and I have put together with our map snappers. Um, hopefully we can get that up and running as well. So yeah, we, yeah, I, looking yeah, forward to that. that. So Internet. everybody, yeah, yeah, should be fun. I, those are, those are some fun videos um that we did so i, I just uh, i hope we can get back to that so i think everyone's yeah. gonna really enjoy that look for those videos coming up and uh yeah enjoy thanks uh, thanks again for having me snarky sorry oh. for being late yeah it's always a pleasure my friend so michael uh final thoughts and any videos you have coming out in the near future yeah the final thoughts about the travel is that as i mentioned before it's very unpredictable but there are apps you can follow to stay up to date maybe i can share it later and for videos coming up, I mean, if you're in the e-commerce industry, I, I teach people how to buy from like Taobao or 1688 without ever having to step foot in China legally. So those are a couple of videos I have coming up that are being updated because, you know, some people want to buy on Taobao and they want to ship it back to their house wherever they are in the world. So there you go. So any, uh, 
Well, thank you, my friend. Uh, Paul, uh, final thoughts and any videos you have coming out in the near future? Uh, Daco, these guys traveling in China is a lot of fun. It's remarkably easy, but when it's not easy or something doesn't go in your own way, it's all part of the adventure. And it really is. And if you miss a bus, there'll be a, another one coming five minutes later. So just be patient. And it'll tell you where it's at. Yeah. And yeah. And people uh, are very friendly. And if you are a lost foreigner, like we've all been at one point in our lives in some random town, there's always going to be someone there to help you. And that's always been my experience from the day I got here. So as far as videos coming out, um, I, I've got it. Um, over the last year, I've been going out to Huizhou in Guangdong. And so I've got a, an amalgam video that I put together called Adventures in Huizhou. Everything from hot springs to hidden noodle shops and little villages Ooh. to the beach and to camping on the side of a cliff. Very, very excited to share that one. Uh, so Mona has helped me put that together the last uh, year or so. <clears throat> as well as wax figurines. Uh, they're made here in Zhongshan. I'm, I'm on my way up to the Canton Tower sometime next week, Michael, to to film the actual museum. And then I've already filmed the factory where they make these things uh, from beginning to scratch. So I got some interesting things, firefighters. In um, uh, I've been training with the local search and rescue team here in Zhongshan uh, at the fire stations, on the trucks, in the firehouses, putting out fires, climbing walls. It's, it's an amazing video. So I got things like that coming out. And hopefully in the next term, more car videos. I'll be in Beijing for the Beijing Auto Show at the end of April. Oh, that'll be fun. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm as looking far forward as to your uh, Wei Zhou stuff. We just bought a house there. So that'll be cool. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll show you around, man. So it's a beautiful nice. city, Hui Zhou is. Definitely. Nice. There you go. So as far as uh, me is concerned, well, um, I do love traveling in China. Uh, like Paul was saying, if you are lost, it's amazing how easy it is if you've got the right apps to find out where to go, how to get there. And most people are generally pretty helpful. I have not really had any hard times. Uh, as far as videos coming out, I've got some more 360 videos I've been working on. Uh, really enjoying that. I also made a video recently in uh, Century Park here in uh, uh, Shanghai. So that's coming out. But uh, yeah. In the meantime, I want to thank all my guests for coming. Do uh, go around, visit their uh, uh, vlogs and all their uh, videos. Uh, definitely uh, mash that like button, guys. It definitely helps. And I want to thank everyone for joining us in the audience. Guys, we will see you next week right here on the Snark Lounge. Have a good week, everyone. See ya. Thanks, brother. And